Okay, now we have our oxygen bottle all set up. We're ready to administer oxygen to our patient. So we're going to show you three different devices. There are plenty more. Your books should be able to explain to you a little bit more about Venturi masks and primarily trach masks. Um, they're becoming more and more popular, particularly trach masks, um, as people are uh, starting to live a lot longer at home as a result of modern technology in medicine. Our first thing that we're going to take a look at, though, is going to be the administration of oxygen through nasal cannula. Nasal cannula has two little nasal prongs that are going to go into our patient's nose. And after we put them into the patient's nose, it's going to go around their ears, and then we'll be able to tighten it up. This will flow liter per minute um, anywhere from one all the way up to six liters per minute, typically giving you somewhere around 40% oxygen concentration. So this would be utilized in an individual who has um, some mild shortness of breath. Then if you're monitoring what their pulse oximetry, pulse oximetry may be, you're probably talking somebody that may be into the 90 to 93 percent where you're going to start them on here and titrate your liter, fl liter flow up until you achieve your um, goal of at least 94 percent or greater. So the first thing that we will do is we would have explained to the patient we're going to place them on oxygen and my patient is very well aware of what's going to happen. We've turned on our oxygen cylinder that is here. I now am going to connect this to the, to the tree at the bottom. I will then adjust this to three or four liters. I'm going to set this to four liters. Notice my bottle is still continuing to lay down. I now have oxygen that is flowing through here. I am then going to come in. I'm going to apply the nasal prongs to my patient's nose. And unfortunately, my patient here does not have ears, but after we place our nasal, nasal cannula in, we wrap it around his ears in the back, and we tighten this up to make sure that there's a comfort level, that this is not going to be too tight around up underneath his neck here like that. And we're now flowing oxygen to the patient. Okay, with our okay. nasal cannula, we're going to come in, we're going to insert our nasal prongs first, then we will loop around the ears, and then we will tighten that up and make it snug underneath the patient's chin. And we are we'll also ahead and utilize a non-rebreather mask. And a non-rebreather mask is designed to be able to allow the patient to start to rebreathe or to um, not breathe in their air uh, as much air. So there are some little side ports that are here. Some models are going to have little rubber pieces on here that can be adjusted to make it a partial rebreather. Um, and this really is going to allow oxygen to flow in here and the patient's going to be able to exhale um, their, their um, carbon dioxide out. So in our patients here, this is going to start at a liter flow of 10 liters. And our patients that when we go to put this on, we place the non rebreather on them. Once it is applied, we're checking this bag to see whether or not it is deflating every time the patient breathes. If they deflate this bag and you have your liter flow set at 10, you go ahead and increase that. If you go up to 12. And if they're not deflating this bag, then you're set. It doesn't always have to be set at 15. You start at 10 and it can increase it. Anytime you go to put oxygen on somebody, particularly with a non rebreather and an nasal cannula, you want to make sure that you've already hooked this up first and have oxygen flow going through it. And we'll show you a little bit better view of this here in a, in a few moments. I'm going to show you the whole part of it first. We now have increased this to 10 liters. I'm then going to place my finger inside and we're going to inflate the non rebreather once it is inflated i am then going to come in we're going to place this on the patient's nose and mouth we're going to place this around the, around the band around their neck or i'm sorry around their head and then we're going to make sure that this is all snug for the patient and i've now applied a non rebreather face mask to my patient we'll continue to monitor them to see how well they're doing after the administration of the oxygen. You also notice that the patient has been sitting up. They're sitting at this angle primarily for the, for the camera, but I will tell you this is probably one of the best ways that we can start handling the airway management as well, is to have the patient elevated a little bit and it makes our job a little bit easier as well. Um, obviously, if this patient was awake, probably want to sit them up a whole heck of a lot more to make them more comfortable um, and, and they can tell me if they're more comfortable or less comfortable. So make sure that you put them in a good position of comfort. We're going to, for our non-rebreather, we're going to make sure that we put our finger right here so that we are able to inflate this bag. Once the bag is inflated, 
We can then apply this to the patient's face, nose and mouth. I'm going to place it over. Make sure that the nose cups are snug. And we will snug him up this way as well. And we've now applied a non rebreather face okay. mask. Our last one that we're going to take a look at is going to be with a bag valve mask. And a bag valve mask is going to be utilized primarily for those patients that we need to provide positive pressure ventilation to. When we administer, these, administer oxygen to these folks, we're also not only administering pure oxygen, we're administering up to about 95% oxygen. We are also making sure that we are ventilating the patient. Each bag is delivering some, has the capability of delivering about 1200 milliliters of air. If you recall from the previous lectures, each time somebody takes in their breath, their tidal volume, they're bringing in about 500 milliliters. So if we decrease this whole bag, we're actually hyper inflating, meaning that we're sending more air into the lungs than what we need to have. So we are actually hyper inflating the patient's lungs and it can create more of a problem. This is the way we would actually have the possibility of hyperventilating. Other things with this is that you will notice that this comes off. This is, a, this is the mask. It has a triangular shape here. This is soft right in through this section so that it will be able to mold to the patient's face a little bit better. And this triangular part is going to go over the nose and it will be right over the mouth. Um, this part that is here is primarily dealing with a harder plastic and when we actually go to do a clamp on here, um, you know, there's a bunch of different names for it. The CE clamp technique is one that I've heard and used quite frequently. You make your finger into the C and you place it on top of that mask and in addition to that you bring your next three fingers down along the jawline and as you're pulling up on the jaw you're able to push down with the C. The other thing I've heard this is the OK symbol. So you're doing the OK, the O on the other part, and your other three fingers are coming out here, so you're making the OK symbol. That's how you would actually start to manage making, maintaining a seal. This part in here is a universal adapter, so that if it has to go on to somebody who may have a stoma, somebody may have an endotracheal tube, or an alternative airway, such as a King LT, a combi tube, or an LMA, that this will attach to the end of it as a standard adapter. Right in here, this section actually comes off. This is where we can actually add some PEEP, which stands for positive expiratory end pressure. And we, we can actually apply that and apply a little bit more pressure to the patient to allow their lungs to, to the alveoli to stay open a little bit more. This has a one-way valve in it. So this was the bag. Here is the valve and here is the mask. So that's how they really got to that complicated name of a bag valve mask. You will notice that we have the reservoir bag that is here. This reservoir bag runs hooked up to oxygen anywhere between the uh, 15 to 25 liters of oxygen. We have the ability at that point to deliver nearly 100% oxygen. So this is then going to uh, attach here and we can now do our CE clamp technique and we're going to ventilate the patient. We're going to squeeze the bag over a one to two second time frame but we're looking for the chest to rise, just enough to make the chest rise. That's all the further that we do, okay? When we hook this up to oxygen, we're taking this end and we're gonna hook it back up to our tree as though we did the other ones. And now we're going to turn this to the, at least the, to the 25, and you will notice that this is now inflating. And once this inflates, you know, we now have sufficient amount of oxygen that is in there. So we would come in, we're doing our C, our E, and now we're going to ventilate our patient. You'll notice it did not take a whole lot for me to squeeze this back, and I'll turn this this way. And you can see that the patient's chest is now rising. This is indicating that I'm giving a sufficient amount of, a sufficient amount of ventilation. So there is adequate tidal volume that is entering the patient. Okay, okay now for our bag valve mask, we're going to go ahead and uh, we've attached the oxygen. We're now going to come in and we're going to apply the mask. We're going to make sure that we have it down over the nose and the mouth. We're going to apply the CE clamp technique. And then we're going to ventilate one breath every five to six seconds.
And for simplicity's sake, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier if you just do it one breath every six seconds.